Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to share the story of a young man who moved to the U.S. as a teenager. Um, he enrolled here in an extra year of high school at a Catholic school, and there was a core course requirement where he'd already covered the material, but he was really interested in this advanced placement biology class. So he went to the school administrator and asked if he could do the swap. Uh, this administrator took one look at this Latino kid with a thick accent and said, I don't think this is the right course for you. It's, it's really difficult. Um, this kid had an unusual amount of gumption, and so he pressed and pressed, and, um, and the administrator relented. He went on to be the AP bio student of the year. Uh, when he went to commuter college next, his knowledge in biology stand stood out. He got invited to do some lab research um, with professors. That impressed Harvard when he applied as a transfer student. He went from Harvard to Yale Medical School. Since he married a woman from Idaho, he now practices medicine in Boise. Um, there are two main points in this story. One is that the unconscious bias of a high school administrator uh, threatened to derail a kid from achieving his, pull, full, his full potential. And we all make knee-jerk uh, determinations about people, and they add up to real harmful barriers, barriers to opportunity for people of color, women, people who speak English in a way that's not the way we're used to hearing it, older people, uh, people with disabilities, and, and poor people. Um, with training and awareness, the administrator might have kept his bias in check. He might have dug a little deeper into this young man's academic record and seen his potential. The second lesson is what helped this young man push back is that he grew up in a country where he was middle class, his family members were professionals, he had always received messages that he, was, that he could succeed. And um, we have a lot of students who show up at college who haven't received those messages and who have been marginalized. And sometimes they need a little bit extra help and support in a community um, to support them. D diversity, equity, and inclusion are about removing barriers to opportunity, checking our biases, and ensuring that everyone has a sense of belonging. Those are all worthy goals. Um, we have a long way to go to achieve equality in this country. And talking about race and racism can be uncomfortable. But there is a moral imperative to reckon with our past and our present so that we can build a brighter, more inclusive future. Thank you for your time.